Hi everyone, Nathan here again with another TreeTech troubleshooting tutorial. Today we're going to enter the foray of database driven forms and we're going to show you how to connect a lifecycle form to a database. And our database of choice today will be an access database. And so I want to start actually by going to access and creating a new database by entering just a, a couple of fields here into a table. And we're just going to enter a few values and once we do that we're going to close and save our table and we'll call it test so now we have a one ta table database with three columns and auto incrementing ID column first name and a last name very simple database. Now we're going to save that database, test data, and we're going to put it on our desktop. So there it is. And we'll close that now. Okay, so now back to Adobe Lifecycle. In order to connect to this database, we need to have two things in place. The first one being the database itself, and then secondly, an ODBC connection. And so in Windows, in order to create an ODBC connection, you need to go to Control Panel, and administrative tools and then select data sources that brings up this ODBC data source administrator and for our purposes here we want to do a system uh, DSN and we want to add now of course if you're going to use access uh, you have to have the access database drivers and that those come with a Microsoft Office installation and if you have another database like MySQL or SQL Server, those drivers will need to be available to you. Um, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So I'm going to check Microsoft Access Driver. I'm going to finish. I'm going to create my data source name. Call it Test Database 1. Uh, leave the description out. And then I need to select the database by going to C Users e desktop and then it finds the north wind in the test data. I'm going to select the test data. I'm going to select OK and now there is my driver. And that's all I need for now in ODBC. Okay so now back to lifecycle. Here we have just a basic blank form open with our two header and footer objects on it. And I want to go over here to the right to the data view tab. A data view tab if it's not available on your layout uh, you can go to window and have make sure this is checked and mine is selected over here on the right panel you can put it wherever you want and when you're in this white space you need to right click and add new data connection and up pops this wizard now in this wizard there's a lot of different choices and we're not going to exhaust any of these choices we're just going to show you one way of doing this and that's the uh, ODBC way we're going to leave the default name and cl click the OLEDB database. When we hit next, we come up to this connection stream. We want to build that. And we want to go to this connection tab and we want to use the data source we created earlier, which was called Test Database 1. We can test that connection to make sure that it can get to it. The test is successful. And so we can say OK there. Now, here's the interesting part. Um, it'd be very easy to select our record source by choosing the table test. But if we do that, we're going to lose the functionality that's in access, whereas uh, each record that's added to the database gets an auto increment. So this will cause the lifecycle to fail on a few of the things I want to show you. So we're going to do a simple query using SQL, and this will give us a broader uh, use of this example because you can use this example with MySQL and SQL Server and other things doing it this way. So we're just going to make a simple select statement. We're going to select the two columns besides the ID column because that, of course that auto increments from the table test. Select next. There's no username and password so we're going to finish. When we do that what we see come up is a database connection called data connection and then two automatic fields and this is where Adobe Lifecycle has gone to the database, looked at it, and said, oh, okay, I see that the 
but the first name column is a text column, so I'm going to associate that with a text field object. And the same thing with the last name. If there was a date field there, or if there was some kind of password field or something like that, it would associate this differently. But since this is a simple example, we just see these two. And what Lifecycle allows you to do now is to just take these objects and drag them and drop them onto your form. And when you do that, the objects that are created have the name of the object in the database, and they have the binding already connected. So we don't have to do all that manually. But just for example, if we wanted to do it manually, we could bring an object from the library. It has no binding right now. We could bind it to data connection, first name. And then when we go back to the field option, we could change the caption to first name. So it's the same thing as doing that. That's just two different ways to do it. And so now we want to run our form and just see if the binding has worked. So when we preview the form, we get this security message. We want to say yes to allow access. And we have a, a good connection. The first record, Mickey Mouse, comes up. Um, but this really doesn't do us much. All it does is confirm that the database is connecting. This doesn't allow us to navigate through records or add records or do anything. And so we need to go back to our form now to add some functionality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the command button from the library and place it on the form, resize it, give it a name first. I'm going to copy and paste that same command button rename this caption last and then I'm going to add some code to this these two command buttons by going to the script window uh, and the click event so what we're saying here is when this button is clicked here's what we want to happen we want to access our data connection and we want to go to the first record in that data connection all right, that's for button number button number one that says first. For last, we want to do the same thing except we want to go to the last record. All right, now let's check func functionality for this. Yes, we want to allow. So now we click first, nothing happens because it's already at the first. We click last, and it goes all the way to Poor Week Pig, which, as if you remember, was the last record in our database and then we can click back to first so that functionality is working well that's what we want to happen now what about adding a record or going to next previous things like that well we can do the same thing again by adding buttons and changing the script to do exactly what we want and this one is next so back to our script window. Just going to change our code a little bit to be next. And this one to be previous. And let's go back to preview PDF. So now we can navigate through the entire data set, hitting next and previous. And of course our last and first still work. And so now one final thing to add. We want to to an, a button, a command button that adds a new record to the database. So we're going to copy this one, paste it here. So now you see we have uh, our previous button that we've copied. We want to create an add button with that and also copy another button and make a delete button. So now we're going to change the code for these two buttons and the code for this will be delete and the code for the add is a little different than you expect it's add new and so now we can go to our preview PDF and we're going to delete our first record and once we do that we go to our last record and then our first record and Mickey Mouse is no longer there and if we want to add a record we get once we click this we get a blank and we can add once we hit return that becomes our new last record 
if we want to add back in Mickey Mouse, that becomes our new last record. And I just want to show you back in Access now how this all works. So let's go back to Access. Okay, back in Access on our test database, we open up the table, and all these edits we've made are now been here. And if you look, Mickey Mouse has been removed as number one, but then added back in as number ten automatically. Uh, the auto number has been issued accordingly. And there, of course, is Roadrunner. So this has been a simple demonstration of how the lifecycle can be used to become a front-end form for a database using ODBC connections and simple command buttons. As always, please submit your questions to our YouTube comments page or uh, go to the blog, truetextroubleshooting.blogspot.com to look at related videos and code and to submit comments and questions.